In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, dear Shalom World family, and welcome back to our preparation of total consecration. We are in day four, Knowledge of Self. I will sing for you the opening song, Love of Eternal Wisdom. We will hear a few bars from the song. for this day is beware of idols and demonic forces to hinder our spiritual walk with God. Let us pray. O oh, Jesus living in Mary, be with us this day as we continue our journey together towards total consecration to Jesus through Mary. And now we have a review of yesterday's session. We looked at our battle against evil using the whole armor of God and using the consecration for the good of our neighbor. Now we invoke the Holy Spirit. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Lord, send forth your Spirit, and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who instructs the hearts of the faithful with the light of your Holy Spirit, make us responsive to his inspirations, so that we may be truly wise, and ever rejoice in his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, friends, we pray our prayer that we pray in our preparation called the Veni Creator. Come, O Creator, Spirit blessed, and in our souls take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made. Great Paraclete, to thee we cry, O highest gift of God, most high, O font of life, O fire of love, and sweet anointing from above, thou in thy sevenfold gifts art known, the finger of God's hand we own, the promise of the Father, thou, who dost the tongue with power endow, kindle our senses from above, and make our hearts overflow with love, with patience, firm in virtue high, the weakness of our flesh supply. Far from us drive the foe we dread and grant us thy true peace instead. So shall we not with thee for guide turn from the path of life aside. Oh, 
May thy grace on us bestow, the Father and the Son to know, and thee, through endless times confessed, of both the eternal Spirit blessed. All glory, while the ages run be, to the Father and to the Son, who rose from death, the same to thee, O Holy Ghost, eternally. Amen. And now, friends, we will have our scripture reading for today. It is taken from the book of Psalms, verses 1 to 15. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory because of your mercy and faithfulness. This very important psalm begins with giving God his glory that is due him and for his unfailing love and faithfulness. Why should the nation say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven and does whatever he wills. Here David the psalmist upbraids the nations who reject God and turn to idols instead of trusting and loving the one true God of heaven and earth. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. The world idolizes silver and gold, intangible riches that can be measured in only tangible and temporal value. The world is ignorant of spiritual worth. The psalmist goes on. They have mouths, but they do not speak, eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear, noses, but they do not smell. They have hands, but do not feel, feet, but do not walk. David goes through this litany of defects that the world considers true value and worth, but in the eyes of God, they are nothing at all but illusions of the world. They produce no sounds from their throats, no sounds, no words, no communication, only the silent deafness of an idol that is really nothing. Their makers will be like them and anyone who trusts in them. This is the lot of the world who runs after these illusory idols that have caused so much human misery to chase after the wind and turn hearts to cold stone. These words are a chilling warning to us who seek the value of things rather than the value of God and his love for us. Please do not live by this world in motto that I will tell you to know the price of everything, but to know the value of nothing. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord, who is their help and shield. The house of Aaron trusts in the Lord, who is their help and shield. King David gives his answer to the idols of the world by acknowledging the total dependence on humanity towards God. We would do well to imitate this great king, to set his words at the core of our very souls and to let these words help in renouncing the idols of the world and its claim upon our spiritual life. Those who fear the Lord trust in the Lord, who is their help and their shield. When the Lord is our help and our shield, we need not hear the words of the world, but trust in God. He will never abandon or forsake us. The Lord remembers us and will bless us, will bless the house of Israel, will bless the house of Aaron, will bless those who fear the Lord, great and small alike. When the Lord remembers his mercy and forgiveness, we need not fear, dear family, but we will rejoice abundantly out of his loving care for us. May the Lord increase your numbers, yours and your descendants. May you be blessed by the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. As children of God and Mary, and brothers and sisters of Jesus, we will become exceedingly rich, rich and joyful, fulfilled in our walk with God. We will bring many souls with us to the heavenly banquet of the Lord. And now I will play for you a song I actually wrote about Psalm 115. It's called Idols. Listen to the words of this song. We will put them on the screen and ask yourself, do I have any of these idols in my life? And if I do, how can I rid of them? They have eyes, but refuse to see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. Throws, 
but they can't talk Idols, they're all around us They confuse us and confound us They have hands But they cannot feel They have a nose But they cannot smell And now I will read for you and comment on this wonderful work that I'm using, A Month with Mary. The soul says, I know that in holy baptism, I have renounced the demon and I'm happy with that renunciation. Before baptism, we were slaves to the devil. After baptism, we became slaves of Christ, according to St. Louis Marie de Montfort in true devotion to Mary. He goes on to say, the demon is so repulsive that I really would not want to make friends with him. Yet so many times I've been overcome by his suggestions and his sinning. Here is a struggle, dear family, we all face. We do not do the good that we wish, but the evil we do not intend, as says St. Paul. I've preferred him to God himself. How awful is my ingratitude and how revolting is my foolishness. This is the lot of all humanity, that we constantly fail to thank God for all his goodness and mercy to us. The demon is a degraded being. He is a monster without order, without happiness, without life. In his fall, he didn't lose his natural qualities, but what are they worth? They are also the greatest torment for him. Here, friends, is the lot for all the fallen angels. They can never repent and change their ways. They will forever blaspheme and hate God forever. A good angel, or the angels that live by truth and admirable activities, especially our guardian angel, who guards us and watches over us and protects us. The holy angels who constantly behold the face of God will be happy forever, and we will be their companions in the beatific vision of eternal bliss. Now the demon lives by lies, because he's forever far from eternal and essential truth. He lives without real activity, but in toilsome agitation. The lives of the fallen angels will be a constant misery and eternal unhappiness forever. The bad angels are always on the lookout to make us fall. They watch us day and night to make us sin and to reject God and to do their evil bidding to divide and conquer us. No, I will never more go near his promptings and beg your solid support. I will never go before you, Lord, without begging for your support, for the demons that prowl about the world only seek to destroy us. I beg your solid support, you conqueror of demons, O Mary, to overcome the demons, to overcome the evil one. You are the terror of the demon. You crush his head. You have been lifted up as the morning star of the world and over all of us, all of us in the world, all of us who seek truth and life, all of us who will do this consecration. We turn to our most holy and immaculate mother 
to protect each one of us from the demons of the world. At a word from her, they will all flee back to hell. What is, about, what is our aspirations for this beautiful reading we've just heard? And we say, you are all beautiful, O Mary, and there is no stain in you. You are my mother. What is the work that we are to do for this reading that I've just given you? When you are tempted, dear family, make the sign of the cross and call on the names of Jesus in Mary to help you. Let us now say the Ave Maristella. Hail, O star of the ocean, God's own mother blessed, ever sinless virgin, gate of heavenly rest. Taking that sweet Ave, which from Gabriel came, peace can form within us, changing Eva's name. Break the sinner's fetters, make our blindness day, chase all evils from us, for all blessings pray. Show thyself a mother, may the word divine, born for us thine infant, hear our prayers through thine. Virgin all excelling, mildest of the mild, free from guilt preserve us, meek and undefiled. Keep our life all spotless, make our way secure, till we find in Jesus joy forevermore. Praise to God the Father, honor to the Son, in the Holy Spirit, be the glory one. Amen. And now our night prayer for these seven days. Remember, friends, to pray this night prayer with fervor and with conviction. And let this memorare prayer, one of St. Louis Marie de Montfort's favorite prayer, root itself in your heart and lives. The memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto you, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. And I will speak about one line in particular for the Memorare. Inspired by this confidence, I fly to thee, O Virgin, a Virgin is my mother. In this line, we are reminded that Mary gives us confidence, she inspires us, and we ask her to let us fly to thee, fly in our souls and minds and hearts. This grateful and beautiful Virgin who has never known sin, stain, or defilement, but is so pure and holy before God. And now our prayer, Jesus living in Mary. O Jesus living in Mary, come and live in your servant, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the perfection of your ways, in the truth of your virtues, in the communion of your mysteries. Rule over every adverse power in your spirit, for the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now our questions for reflections. What are the idols in my life? Can I name them? Is there anything that I am too attached to that hinders my spiritual walk with Jesus and Mary? How can I discern what is an idol and what is not in my life? Let us pray. We thank you and praise you, most holy Trinity, and most immaculate mother. We beg you to fill us with your spirit of love and truth so as to bear much fruit for the salvation of souls. And now we will hear a few lines from our closing song, Jesus living in Mary, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus living in Mary, come live in here is a body to move among men, reach out again to others. Jesus giving in Mary, come live in me. Here are two hands that are able to bear. 
teach them to share with others. Here is a mind to be filled with your light. Let it ignite for others. Here is a voice that was made for your word. Let Living in Mary, come.